Good evening. The news gang is here. Tonight, the vessels that have been ferrying death across the Likoni Channel for a while now, do we really care? Also, the mattresses that carried some 60 billion shillings, but whose mattresses were they? And the NASA funeral arrangements at last, why did it take 20 months? We'll also have the memo, the punchline, the kicker, the angle, and... The take? Of course. The take. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Remember me? <laughs> yes, but let's okay. start in Mombasa where we must and mm. we will listen first now to Colonel Lawrence Ituma who is leading those operations that are still going on as we speak. Currents are so strong because of that funnel effect and again uh, uh, the depths that we are operating on uh, very deep depths uh, from around 130 uh, ranging up to 200 feet 15 to 20 minutes going down then 20 minutes uh, that's the maximum time uh, the divers can be able to take uh, to, uh, to take down and then they use now the remaining or uh, 20 to 25 coming up because that is when they have to decompress for that uh, pressure difference to be able to for the body to be able to absorb otherwise they come up uh, very fast we are going to lose them oh wow ladies and gentlemen still updates explanations about different things that are not working why it's taking too long on this one some people would say we are between the devil and the deep blue sea when it comes to response rescue search linas What's really going on here? Joe, um, the 13 football players, some young boys that got stuck in uh, some cave. Mm, Thailand. In Thailand. Mm. With their coach, a total number of uh, 14 people. They were lucky not to have gotten stuck in a cave in Kenya. They'll all be dead. Mm. Because when something like this happens, what is critical is time. You are racing against time. How fast do you respond? We are getting canal. Time is everything, yes. Time is everything. Well. We, yeah. we think Canal Gituma briefing us today on Thursday. This incident happened when? Sunday. 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 To what end? Is he an undertaker? Mm. He's just basically out there to take care of the bodies. We don't want to know how deep that sea is. All we know is the Kenyan Navy is based not too far from the Likoni Channel. I think the Kenyan uh, rescue services, the Kenyan government, betrayed this poor lady and her child on this day. The Kenya ferry services, what action did it take in the first place? What was the immediate response? The little videos that we have from the scene, uh, we only saw the ship, the, the car basically yeah. going down. Mm. And so people horrifying. taking, taking uh, lots of phot for, for photographs of that. I think this is a very sad uh, day for Kenya. That poor lady and the child, her blood is basically on the hands of Kenyan authorities, mm -hmm. period. And, and, and lots of questions to be asked, Yvonne, uh, even from the very beginning, mm -hmm. how this thing happened in the first place. A car that is already on the ferry, somehow rolling yeah. off and yeah. plunging into the sea. I mean, it is almost inexplicable, isn't it? It is, and it brings to light the state of our ferries in this country, and we are not new to disasters. I mean, if everybody remembers Mtongwe, it, it, oh. it really scarred this country for life. And you start to think about, so that, that ramp that they come up is, is called a prow, and ideally it should be about 30 to 45 degrees when it's up and the ferry is in motion. Mm -hmm. So if it had been up, it would have ideally prevented the car from rolling off in the first place. But like I said, it brings to light issues of ferries, the conditions in which they are, the safety and the amount of investment, such that even when uh, the members of parliament, uh, like Mishim Boko, you know, the, uh, representing uh, the women of Mombasa County, in Parliament saying this is what's happening. Let's take a look at Kenya Ferry Services, shall we? They have four ferries transporting over 350,000 people per and day, they, yeah. um, about six to seven or six to eight thousand uh, vehicles, vehicles per yeah. day as yeah. well. Now, these machines are supposed to be kept in good working order. They're supposed to be what is called dry docked. 
after every 8,500 hours of service or every 18 months. Now, it will shock you to know that um, in around 2010, by the time the new administration at the time was coming in, there had been no dry dock for over seven years. Hmm. These things are not maintained. And if we want to take a look at the investment of the Kenya government in this ferry service that is free, take a look at this. That uh, MV Jumbo. The right? one that told uh, less than a year after yes. it had been bought. And mm. do you know how long uh, that took? It took about um, four or five years before it was actually purchased. The need was identified four or five years before, and it took almost four years for them to actually purchase it. In fact, if you take a look at others like MV Kuala and MV Likoni, from the moment they identified the need for these, it took seven years for delivery. So this is the state in which we are, uh, and we need to start asking questions of two bodies. Kenya Ferry Services is a limited company owned by the government of Kenya. 80% 80 Treasury, 20% yeah. uh, Kenya Ports, Ports Authority. Yeah. Where is the investment in this? How much money are we putting in terms of maintaining these ferries to make sure they're in tip-top condition, that they are insured, that the persons and the personnel who are actually working there are A, well-trained, and two, also have their own personal and indemnity insurance um, to enable them carry out uh, their duties, uh, it is serious. Do you know something Yvonne and, and, says that I really need to say now before you, 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 you ask the question? She talks about the equipment itself mm -hmm. and the ferry itself. This particular one, the one that was uh, involved in this tragedy, is the MV Harambe. Mm -hmm. It had been, uh, it was brought back in 2016 after it had undergone repairs and enhancements. The repairs cost about 143 million. Now, it had been decommissioned in 2015 because it was, uh, it was declared to be unseaworthy. At the time, it had functioned for 29 years, yeah. this particular one, the MV Harambe. So there are all these questions coming up about it. And uh, Lena, as you talked about how it took so long um, to actually start <coughs> the, the, the mm -hmm. such uh, um, effort. And I'm told that usually when something like this happens, there are steps to be followed. Mm -hmm. The first one, they call it the preparatory stage. This is where now they go in and they try to do mapping and mm -hmm. they try to look at the ocean terrain mm -hmm. and try and look at where exactly did this uh, car go down. And they found 14 spots. They call them 14 different positions, likely positions where the vehicle could have gone down. And then now, once they've done that, they send teams into each and every position. Mm -hmm. I don't think they've even done all the 14 as they've of done today. I think five. Five, so yes. Yeah. And, and usually this stage ends when the car is spotted. Okay, and then now the third one is where they say that they try to reach, they call it the retrieval, where they try to be careful and ensure the dignity of the victims. And the last one now is where they do the post-mortem of the whole operation to look at where did we do right, where did we go wrong, what could we have done better. And there are those who say that that initial stage of the preparatory stage was delayed. That's where time yeah. could have been lost yeah. Yeah. Uh, in this particular instance. And, and, and Francis, uh, this is interesting because uh, the Auditor General had actually raised questions about this. Yeah. It's emerging mm. that last year, in a report that was tabled in Parliament, actually the Auditor General Edward Ouko at the time said it was observed but that, the that the most of the pulleys on most ferries are defective and that's causing the prows to be submerged in water when mm -hmm. the ferries are moving. And he mm -hmm. went on to say that this endangers pedestrians and motorists and that actually the point Yvonne was making that the, pa the company had not ensured all ferries for third party liability, therefore yeah. it would be difficult for the company to settle liabilities in case of an accident which requires compensation. So you have a situation here, uh, Francis, where uh, the Auditor General uh, gives such a damning report, it's tabled in Parliament and uh, usually adopted, and mm -hmm. then it lies somewhere. A year later, something like this happens. That is the calamity of our country. Very many good things are said, but the end there at the saying stage, implementation, because this is where the real matter should be, implementation. Once the Auditor General has pointed out, or any other officer who has used public resources to investigate a matter or to ascertain certain things and has made certain recommendations, then the first thing to do is to implement those recommendations and prevent that which would have occurred had those recommendations not been implemented. Look at the Mtongwe report there were very many nice things that were recommended. How many have been implemented? Very few. In fact, try and look for that report now. Hmm. You will really struggle to find it. It's actually not on the site. It's anymore. not on the site. Hmm. Because there are many things that were recommended, but they were not. So there's also some shame in the implementing body, i.e. the government. Number one. Number two, 
who whose responsibility is it to do certain things because if you're saying these fairies some of them are unseaworthy and yet they are being used by thousands of people every day then this is one case of Mariam Kigenda and Her daughter, daughter Amanda, Amanda Muteu. Yeah. What if, what if that ferry capsizes? We're talking about thousands of people yeah. who would be lost. Yeah. And secondly, and this is where it is really disappointing. On the 20th of October, 2019, at Mamangina Drive, President Uhuru Kenyatta will be leading the nation in marking Mashujade. On Monday, the PS in charge of interior affairs uh, was in Mombasa mm -hmm. to inspect the rehearsals that are going on because the Kenya Navy will be staging a presidential salute for the president. This is where the good gentleman called uh, warrant officer 102, Mwandawiro, will be saying, Tuko Imara Angani, mm -hmm. Tuko Imara Ardini, na Tuko Imara Majini. Majini yeah. yes. There is a possibility that the bodies of these two victims Might may not be found mm -hmm. by that time. So, will we hear that statement of Tukoimara Angani, Majini, Ardini? It will be a disappointment because when you are saying Tukoimara, Majini, there are two Kenyans, two tax, two who two Kenyans, yeah. one a taxpayer who are under the water at that time. Na hawa ko imara. Na ni dihirisho that hatuko imara. And the family that is saying. I am not too sure about yeah. that. Imara yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and when yeah. we talk about um, some of the agencies that are involved, you know, I, I highlighted this in my explainer. Where is the Kenya Coast Guard Service that was launched just last year? If you remember, with a lot of uh, pomp mm -hmm. and yeah. fanfare yeah. Um, in October in 2018, time, right? Yes, and they are the ones tasked with search and rescue. What did they do? How much equipment do they have? What are their trained personnel? And remember, they have both uniformed and civilian personnel, and they are mandated by uh, law. I Joe, want us to, to carry listen out to, search and to rescue. listen to okay. Senator Sakaja, yes. who, who spoke uh, okay. rather eloquently about this in, in, in the Senate. Uh, I, I don't know if we can get that. So, yeah. More than 24 hours later, 48 hours later, there had been no rec rescue efforts. A few meters up away from there, the Navy, the military are practicing. You know, the divers, they're practicing how <laughs> they will do a showcase during uh, the next national celebration something fundamentally wrong with us and how we actually treat Kenyans. I, I am sure if it was a tourist, if that vehicle was for tourists that sank into the ocean, there would be swifter response. If it was a van full of parliamentarians, there would definitely have been swifter response. So even as we debate this motion, which we will debate, and we've passed many motions, we've passed that bill, I think ultimately we need to look at ourselves inherently, our values as a people on what we do for the least in our society. Because you cannot be able to do big things, even the small things, matters of the heart, matters of common sense. And we, you know you cannot legislate on common sense. We cannot create a law to, to help us empathize. You cannot create a law that will give you a heart. Yes, you cannot. Kai, in Kai, fact, Kai, Kai, Kai. Oh, yeah, want I, to I want okay. to read um, a tweet here by a gentleman called Captain Wandering. Uh -huh. He's a uh, uh -huh. former military officer. He says, Kenya, the Kenya ferry tragedy, one simple, one simple question the media is not asking. What is the work of the National Disaster Operations Center in this effort? It is the National Disaster Operations Center that should have the register of all resources, equipment, skills, and personnel required to respond to, the, to, the, to, to disasters. The KDF, police, Coast Guard act when... NDOC heightens the level of disaster. Coordination of the disaster response and recovery are by law supposed to be done by the National Disaster Operations Center, by law. Even if Coast Guard does not exist mm. or did not exist, mm. NDOC does exist. But yet the Coast Guard but, but, uh, but Linus, I mean, for any Kenyan watching, they can see there is a proliferation mm. of all these bodies. And, yet and it doesn't matter, quite frankly, yeah. who yes. is doing what, yeah. if some two Kenyans are still stuck mm -hmm. under the sea uh, almost a week later now. And, and it's been captured very well by the Honorable uh, Johnson Sakaja. He has struck at the heart of the issue. The heart of the issue is the mindset of governance. Mindset of governance in this country is VIP oriented. 
VIPs are important, and then followed by deputy VIPs, assistant VIPs, and it goes all the way down to uh, Mariam Kigenda and non, Amanda non Mifeu, VIPs. Yeah. literally at the bottom of the sea. That is how it works in, uh, in, in, the, in this country. He was very right about the, the person involved here. Mm. Who is uh, Mariam Kigenda and who is Ma Amanda, the four-year-old? Who are they? Mm. If it was a VIP, that vehicle would not even have gotten wet from that water. It can't touch the sea mm. because somebody will be there immediately, regardless the processes that um, they write down there, to do what common sense demands, which is save a life. I think this is uh, such a sad uh, time. And then look at the response that lacks what uh, Johnson Sakaja captures there correctly, empathy. We had the Minister or Cabinet Secretary for Interior today. He's in charge of the Coast Guard, uh, if I'm not mm, wrong. He He's is. in charge of the Coast, yep. Coast Guard. And we had the CS in charge of transport. You had in the governor, and the governor of Mombasa, of Mombasa County there. Of, of, yeah, and they stood there talking to us about transportation yes, yeah. of cargo. Yeah, the, the, Kats the, the, the Qataris are there. Yeah, they the were Qataris at Arambi House today. Yeah, yeah they were at yeah. Aram Arambi House. Mm. How insensitive can these right. gentlemen be? How heartless can they be? What does it take to just tell the country, we are sorry for the disaster that happened in Mombasa mm -hmm. and the rescue operations are going on? This honestly goes down at that, as at now as the most insensitive cabinet in the history of uh, Speaking this about country. insensitivity, Lena, so I look at ni Utu. Mm. You know the fact that you need to jali maslahi mm. watu. Mm. Let's look at uh, the 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 ferry that that uh, what is, was involved in this tragedy, and we look at lessons. Did we learn any lessons from Mtongwe, where over 272 people were killed after it happened? Of course, there are all issues that said that the vessel had carried weights above its mm -hmm. limit. There were a raft of recommendations that were made, but were they ever implemented? For instance, when the ferry is kwamaji kiendelea na kubeba watu abiria na mizigo, they're supposed to be uh, life jackets and floaters. Mm -hmm. Are they there? I'm not so sure. They're supposed to have divers on board in case anything happens. Were they there? I'm not so sure. Now, we look at how this regular kuharibika kwa ferry, a lot of people are inconvenienced. The number of times that una ina njiani, you have to try and rescue people. The number of times you go there and there's only one ferry and uh, you've said over 300,000 people use it every single day. It has reached a point where people actually prefer not to live on that side. People try and, and find you know, homes. I, do you know, I, 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 I don't, don't cross, I also yeah. need to make sure that uh, yeah. that that because when people drive in, they're supposed to switch off, exactly, cars, get out, and all of yes. that. Yes, do and they there do ought that? To be people who actually ensure that that happens. Those I mean, ones when on you're the on an aircraft, yeah. there are people who walk around to see whether you actually yes, have that seatbelt. Seat yes. yes. right. They tell you to fasten it, but someone actually still goes around and to make sure, sure that you do. He took a story yesterday. I'm sorry, Ivan, I've interrupted you, and he actually went on the ferry and he saw motorists wakiondani ya magari yao not switched off and waku kwa maji ono ulizo wanti oh tumesha kadibia kufika those are really really important things because you're told and did, you see, did you see one of no, those yeah. people who are standing on this thing that you've told that the it's ramp. called the, the, prow, the prow. prow yeah when the when they were taking those photos when that yes. that car was actually sinking, sinking there are all these people who are standing dangerously close, close to, to close it. to the edge right. where you actually think that they could filming with their phones yes. filming with their phones and they could mm. actually tip over and get themselves yeah. and and that's what we're talking about about the personnel on the ferry um so you know there's those who are manning the gangway yes. and they're actually supposed to patrol the ferry to and fro the entire trip raise certain issues with the coxswain and say okay a we have maybe a drunk and unruly fellow uh, please call the police or we have this issue or we have that issue and alert the coxswain and say there is a problem here send out a distress signal. But I just wanted to talk about um, the ferries and, and their safety and how much investment has been made. Because in the wake of Mtongwe and a number of others, um, you know, the management of the ferry said, okay, you know what, we have a problem. Remember, the ferry service is free. It is only the cars that pay a subsidized amount. But this is something that is subsidized by the government. How much is the government subsidizing Kenya ferry services operations? Those are some of the questions to ask. How much money do they receive? What is their shortfall? These are some of the things you would expect those members of parliament who are now talking about the Kenya Ferry Services to be raising them every single budget here. If the Kenya Ferry Services has to wait seven years 
to get a ferry whose need was determined seven years before when i mean take a look at these numbers in 1994 we had seven vessels we were uh, about 50,000 people per day in 2010 there was over 170,000 a day in 2015 that number went up to 320,000 a day right now they're serving upwards of 350,000 people per day now they started to say okay we're a limited company we're not getting as much subsidy from the government because the government says do not charge mm -hmm. fair enough but this is a free service we're expecting first class service we're not paying a first class ticket so what some of the members of the management uh, proposed is maybe we should ask them to pay about 10 shillings that would be about if you multiply by 300,000 that's what about three well, quite yeah. his time at yes. had, the had, and, really and do you remember one shilling. that cost him his seat uh, yeah. some say that cost him his political seat so this is where Kenya, Kenya Ferry Services is at the moment they don't make enough money to be able to do repairs to buy new ferries how much is the government subsidizing them to make sure that these ferries that are running are actually seaworthy and yet we're saying, don't charge. Fair enough, not a problem. But where is the government subsidy to ensure that they are then able to run these ferries in a way that is safe for all of these 300,000 people plus? So even as we're looking at Kenya Ferry, I think this is a moment to now say, how much are we funding Kenya Ferry services? Are they able to run this, not just efficiently, but you know, with safety and security? How many people do they have on board? Four on the decks, four in the engine room, four on the gangway, one coxswain. All I mean, you know, put it this way, budget, the budget making process is largely a parliamentary yes. process. So I would have expected our members of parliament yesterday, the two houses adjourned normal business to Absolutely. discuss the, the disaster in Mombasa, the, yeah. the ferry disaster. You see, I would have expected that we, our parliamentarians don't adjourn to discuss a tragedy when it has happened. Why wouldn't there be a situation where our parliamentarians adjourn because there have been issues raised about the capacity of Kenya Ferry Services, the amount of resources allocated and say, today, let us adjourn normal house business, let us discuss the Kenya Ferry Services, what are the needs there? Because all these issues are known. And make no mistake, our budget every year has a lot of money for what I would call non-essential services, non-essential functions. Why wouldn't you take this money <laughs> that is allocated to trips, luxury, invest it at the Kenya Ferry Services so that because you're dealing with 350,000 people every, every day. day. So what is more important, trips or functional services at Kenya Ferry Services? I want to play you a soundbite by Governor Hassan Joho when he visited um, the scene of accident and there's something interesting he said about the need for heads to roll at kenya ferry services listen to what he was saying Paka ferry because a chain Paka ferry iwe iwe na majukumu ambaye haezi kuona safe safe na watu wake yuko mtu ambaye amezembea kazini kwake kuna mtu amezembea moja Kuna mtu amezembea wapi? Kazini kwake. Sasa ndugu mwenyekiti, wewe una miezi miwili. Wewe una miezi miwili. Tukwambia we must see changes kwa management ya Kenya Ferry Services. And heads must roll. Watu waanze kwenda nyumbani sasa hii. Kama MD atoshi aende. Kama engineer atoshi aende. Very good. Come on, Kwenda. Yes, what I end. Let me put it this Actually, way. Actually, in 2016, see, Hassan yes. Musa, the end of yes. the yes. so yes. was stolen right. and whatever. Yeah, we are three years. The, the Ndugu Mwanyakiti being talked about is Dan Muazo. Put it this way. Even if you, Linus Kaikai, today was appointed managing director Kenya Ferry Services today, to take over from Bakari Goa, the current uh, mm. MD. With the current situation, there's very little that you're going to do. So, yes, waende, yeah. kama wanaenda, lakini pia... Treasury. Treasury. KPA. Wote. Na pia, wakienda, wale watachukua na fasi zao, mm -hmm. they should have resources yes. to make sure that the Kenya Ferry Services 
is a functional body well equipped to take care of 350,000 people every day and over 6, who are using vehicles. that facility. And the governor and all otherwise, the otherwise yeah. the management itakuwa ikienda kila wakati when there is a disaster of yeah. this magnitude. And yeah. indeed, when we're talking about heads rolling, um, well, we've seen some schools coming down, but have we seen any heads rolling in the wake of the disaster that took place at Precious Talent School? That is what we'll be talking about next after this break here on News Gang. Stay with us. <laughs>